housing. We're going to be installing a brand new belt by Hunterworks. This is the HW925T. This belt claims to have more material between the lugs. So the gap between right here and right here at the root of this lug here, there's more material. So the claim is it'll give you better engagement torque at low speed and it'll last longer. So let's try it out. So first we got to take this thing for a before test drive. We got to see what the maximum RPMs are at full throttle. We'll also test to see what the engagement is like at low speed. See if it's kind of slow, if it, if it slips a bit, and uh, once we get that we'll go ahead and we'll install the new belt, this belt, and we'll go ahead and we'll repeat the test. Now there is also a disclaimer that being that this is a brand new belt and that that belt is got 600 miles on it, it's going to take a little bit to break in. So the numbers for the RPM, the max RPM and the engagement might change. They're probably going to smooth out. Maybe the max RPMs will come up a bit. I don't know. But we're just going to go ahead, throw it on, and see what it does. All right, let's go for that test ride. All right, we're at the testing grounds. Uh, go ahead and turn the air conditioning off. Yes, this has air conditioning. Because that takes a little bit of the load off the engine. I also have a question for anybody else who uh, maybe owns one of these North Star Edition machines with the air conditioning. Do you have good air conditioning, like a car or truck? Because this, this thing does not get that cold, especially when it's like 85 degrees outside. The vent temperature is like 72 degrees. It's, it's really not impressive at all, and it barely cools me off. Like if I've been working out and real hot, I need to come in here to cool off a little bit. It, it just doesn't do it for me. So, is that a common thing? Is that a common thread with these machines? Or, or is mine just one of the bad apples? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put it in diff lock. We're gonna put it in standard mode because work mode limits your max throttle. And we'll go ahead and just drive around and then there's a flat spot where I can give it full throttle. Here's my engagement, so I'm going to creep up to it. It's like right at... It kind of kicks right around uh, that 1500 to 1600. And it's, it's pretty smooth. It's not real jerky. Like I can creep off the line. It does kind of have that initial little bump. But then once it's engaged, it kind of just... I can just control it super smooth like. And it's, uh, you can hear that little bit of whine. That little bit of whine is actually, uh, well, it doesn't fully engage on the belt. It's kind of slipping up until seven miles an hour. In high range, that is. Low range. That's basically, that's fully engaged. Right there. So we'll go ahead and put it in high. seven miles an hour is when that kind of squealing goes away it's not even like squealing it's just like a like a whirring sound like a whining Let's get in position here. It's got on flat ground so it's nice and level. Don't want to be cheating a bit. All right, let's give it. So we saw 37 miles an hour and about 6,300 RPM off the line. And then it dropped down to about 6,200, 6,250. 
Um, let's see what he does again. Alright, so it dropped down to 6100 RPM right about there. So it starts off 6300 and then it drops down about, oh, 20 miles an hour. Then it, start, it drops down to like 6100 RPM. Let's go ahead and put that other belt on. Let's go put the Hunter Works belt on here. All right, so we've got the belt here, got the tools here. We're gonna need a eight millimeter socket and an extension. All right, let's pop the bed up. So now that I've driven this machine around and it's nice and hot, I should definitely get in here with my hands and try to work on it. So I gotta find all the bolts. This is fun. Alrighty, so a little impact here. Let's try to get all these bolts out. Are they captive? Nope. And they're not captive either. That's extra fun. Oh boy, right off the bat I'm gonna need that little other thing. Let's see, can I get that one? I don't even know how I got that one before. I've had this off before, but man, there is no, man, if, if you had to do this trail side, it would be kind of a pain. They just don't give you enough room. There's one down here. I didn't put them in very tight last time. At least they don't have like a ton of thread. Trap the wrench in there. Yeah, this is gonna take a minute. These little stinkers. Uh, the manual procedure for this, by the book, I mean, they want you to take this whole pipe loose. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. You don't have to do it. I've had it out, had this cover out without doing that. And I'd rather not, because right here's your air filter, and this is your clean side. This is your filtered air, and you get dirt in here, and, well, where's it going? Right in the engine. Bolt the bolt there. Nope, got that one. Sneak under here. Push that boot out of the way. extension this is gonna be fun hey yep so I did it before you gotta sit on the tire and squeeze in here not to bonk your head of course got this big old helmet bonking it on everything. That bolt's out. Drop it down. Where's the other? Oh, okay, this one. I got one bolt left. And I've got, got two left, of course. I don't even... How? So there's one right here. I have zero clue how I'm gonna get that out. Cause you can't come from, 
You know what? I think I can. Never mind. <laughs> Snaky. Snaky tool. Oh man, there's no room. I can't even swing arms in the way. Oh, you are. I need like a five inch extension. And that would let me do it. Need that 90 pound Filipino buddy. I cannot. Dang it, come on. You gotta hang upside down from your ankles with this one. Damn it. I don't know how I got that out before. I do not remember. How did I do that? Man, I think I... Jeez, how did I do that? I have zero clue how I'm gonna get that out. Alright, well I've got... Let's get this one while I can. It should be backed out. Of course, if you got that one bolt down there, it's not helping. Don't want to drop these in the skid pan. Is this even, is this even tight? Oh, is it even tight? No way, it's not even tight. All right, if I, I can't even, I can't even get a hand in there. It's crazy. How are you supposed to get this out? Ouch. There's like no reasonable way the bolt it just doesn't want to spin. It's loose, but it doesn't want to spin. Gosh darn it. Helmets, helmets, helmets in the way. Probably something. Can I spin that bolt, please? My hand. What is going on? Come on. Could you just... I need like a mini mini ratchet. Hold on. Alright, I got me one of these little 8mm through hole sockets with a wrench. There's like no... I can barely see what I'm doing, let alone keep it in frame with the camera. Where's that? Where's the bolt? Find the bolt. This is a joke. I, I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> I can get it on the bolt, but uh, good luck finding the position to swing the wrench. All right, so I got another eight mil. I got a. I grabbed the wrong one. All right, so I grabbed another eight mil socket. This time it's a quarter inch drive instead of three eighths. Got myself a little skinny extension. Maybe that'll give me just teeniest amount extra control. I think I'm turning it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Don't be a turd. Alright, get in there. Come on. Yep. Look at that. Hand in the ass. But I got it. So, you think that's the problem? Well, how do you get this out? You pull it out just enough, push it up. Well, you gotta get it away from all the lines. And then, let's see here. Yeah, it's got a minute. No, I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna do it forward. forward. Well, this is in the way. So, now we forward, or do we go back? If I get it back, this is in the way, of course. That's in the way. I go, there's a way. I don't know if it's not on many times. Of course, it's like, how many years ago? You know, eventually it's like you try it one way, you try it the other way, and then the first way works. So, this thing's kind of a goober. Yeah, that clutches. That hot. It's so close, too. It's like, so close to clearing that. This is in the way, up here. And that's why they want you to take that off. Oh, there we go. Is that the magic one? Yeah. Okay. So, 
I'll lose my grip, slip or something. Okay, that's my pop. Er, over the crest of the hill. And then you're gonna take it out through the bottom. And then, or bring it up again. Or bring it up, or turn around. Oh shit. Well, down there, yeah. It's a, it's a teeny bit of dust. Not a big problem. Our seal, our seal was in there. Not seal's in there, seal's in there. All our bolts got all this darn dust on me. And then how are we for heat? Oh, she's a bit, yeah, she's a bit hot. Yeah. There's this belt. It's under some decent tension. I'm gonna check the, uh, the sheave alignment here real quick. I'm just gonna take a picture in here with my phone to see which side this belt is favoring. And if it's, uh, if it's favoring one side or the other, you know that this secondary clutch needs to be shimmed. You can take this bolt out, there's shims under there, and shim on the other side on the inside. And depending on which way you need to move it, you take a shim out and put it over here, take a shim off of here and put it over there. Shimming that, making sure that alignment is proper, will also help you with uh, no throttle drag. So when you try to put it in gear, it's kind of trying to spin the transmission and it's not doing what it's supposed to. It's not fully disengaging. So we'll go ahead and take a picture of that and check it out. All right, I can see daylight on both sides of that. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so we're gonna need one of these tools. Every one of these machines would come with one of these. This is the tool that allows you to take the spring and, and compress it so that you open up your secondary sheave here and that lets you get the belt off. So let's go ahead and do it. Once we get this belt off, I'll be able to compare the belt, the factory belt, to the Hunter Works belt and be able to see what the difference, how much more material the Hunter Works belt actually has. This works too. Spin that. And it's pretty hot. Ouch. And the secondary is pretty warm. So that's what I get for reaching in here and grabbing it. And for testing purposes, I think I'll just leave the cover off when I take it for the test ride. And we'll go ahead and pull that down and hold it as it comes around. Is this to pull that off? Yeah, very nice, very nice. Get in frame as it comes out of there. All right, so it's pretty, pretty loosey goosey. Like a big old fat truck you might have picked up. I mean, it is also pretty warm. Oh, did I put that on backwards? Look at that. The lettering. The lettering was facing the other way. How about that? Oh no, these are directional. Shriek with the lights. Yeah, I can see, I can see the difference, even, this is pretty flexible too, yeah, but I could see even without taking this out, just by remembering what I saw when I had this out last, this belt is different, look at the, look at the cross section, so this one's kind of thin between there, and this has got probably half of this width more so it's like one and a half times the width of this and the rubber looks a little a little different this one's more of a rubbery unfinished this one's got some kind of a maybe a pvc coating or or an acrylic coating on the very outside i don't know if that does anything or it's just a difference in manufacturing this is going to need a little bit to break in uh being that this, it's got this kind of nice, smooth, shiny, kind of a, it's a worn in texture to it. And this one is still very much a kind of a rubbery, right out of the cast. So, we'll go ahead and slip this one back in the box. It is technically a box. It's got four sides. Well, it's also made in the USA, that's good. Um, Alrighty, let's go ahead and put this on. Trying to get it over the top there. Yep, alrighty. It's got a little, okay, it's a little bit more rigid. It's not broken or anything. Just trying to see myself here. I'm gonna get my head in here and work on it. Come on, what is going on? What is, what is your deal? Come on. Don't shave the skin off my knuckles, please. Okay, there we go. Like, gotta start it on the top. 
Try to rotate back over there. Yep, can do that. Yep, can do that. No, bust in my, can I bust in my knuckle, please? Thank you. Please, again. No, it's quite a bit more rigid. It's good though. Alrighty, so, got it over. Now we can go ahead and take this loose, spin this around the other way, and do our tool. Should that built up in there. Just gonna go ahead and turn that by hand. Alright, got the tool out now. I guess you could you could spin this by hand to get the belt to go where it needs to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the engine on. There we go. Look at that, we're in neutral, and it's not spinning the transmission. How's that for cool? I mean, it's kind of making it vibrate a little bit, but looks pretty good to me. Alrighty, let's go ahead and take this thing for a test ride. Alrighty, so we got the new belt in. Probably gonna take a little bit of driving for this thing to break in. Uh, let's get onto a flat spot where I can test the engagement. All right, so we're not rolling on our own. Let's see what it does. So engagement RPM is right the same. Let's see what it does off the line, just kind of slowly pulling out. The, uh, it's interesting, the transmission noise of the belt, a kind of a whirring or a whining sound off the line, it seems, I don't, it's barely noticeable. <sighs> Woo! Alright, let's try that in high. Yeah, I like that. It's, there's barely any difference, but it feels, it, it feels like the stock belt, maybe just slightly more confident, like it just, like it just reaches full engagement off the line, maybe just like a, just a pinch quicker. So, uh, I know they say you're not supposed to let this thing go to full throttle, for like the first 10, 15 miles, but I don't have 10, 15 miles to drive just for a video, so let's go ahead and jam this thing. Broke the tires loose. Wow. Damn, son. Broke the tires loose. That's... Wow. Dry grass typically doesn't break the tires loose in two-wheel drive diff lock. And that wasn't even performance mode, too. Like normally I need to put it in performance mode to just get the tires to break loose just so I can stab the throttle quick enough. Alright, so we'll go ahead and just make sure our diff lock isn't engaged. Don't want to get off the line and have it break the diff lock. Alrighty, let's see what our RPMs are. I saw coming down the hill it was about 5800 RPM. And we'll just make sure to note our end of run mile an hour. Alright, so I thought about the same max speed. About 37 miles an hour. I think it was a little slower, but the belt's still breaking in, I'll give it that. Um uh, take an eye on what my RPMs are. Alright, 5800 RPM, then it dropped down to about 5750 to 5700. I mean, if that's if that's what it's going to do, it's going to drop the RPM a little bit, I'm, I'm all for it because I feel like these CVT machines are just kind of too noisy when you're just wanting to cruise around. They just rev up the engine for no reason. Let's get that air conditioning going. Even though it doesn't work that good, 
it, it'll still do something. Because it's like a greenhouse in here. But I'm just surprised that it breaks the tires loose. I mean, that's just... That, it does not do that normally. How are we looking in here? Looks like maybe the belt might have a little bit of shininess to it starting right on the... Right on the... Those teeth there. Starting to shine up. For next video, I'm gonna be taking these wheels off and greasing the hubs. I think that'll be an interesting video. I finally got the tool to do it. I had the tool for the front wheel bearings, but of course Polaris decided to put smaller wheel bearings in the back. Seatbelt on, helmet engaged. Alrighty, so I'm gonna leave it in diff lock tool drive. Well, let's see, we're, we're real close to 666 miles. We'll get there. Oh, we're at 69% fuel. And I just broke the tires loose, no joke. I'm not even trying, I just kinda like broke the tires loose. Yeah, it, wow off the you know what it's doing because this computer this computer's got a three foot torque limit three foot of roll he tries to give the clutches good time to take up the slop and get fully engaged before it whacks it and gives it full throttle no matter what you do with the pedal so i think what this is doing this belt's got so much more grip it's got well you know it's got that one and a half times the sectional density I think what it's doing is it's just, it's meeting the, the wheel speed, the forefoot, and the computer's just giving it full throttle sooner. So, it basically seems like it's got more power off the line because it's putting more power to the transmission, and then the computer's letting it have more power right off the line even quicker. So, I bet you this thing can blow the tires off right now. It sure does, wow. Wow. I gotta be careful with this thing now. Yeah, at least I got some hardy grass going over there. Alrighty, let's go for the performance mode. She's got some jump. Six miles an hour. Alright, let's slow her down. So I think I saw 46 miles an hour and our RPM is coming all the way down to 5600. It's hanging right around 5560 or 5550. There's 5600. 5700. 40 miles an hour. I think the more I drive it, it's just getting slightly, slightly better. to say here well you got to do the hard break in well so you got to do the hard break in yep you got to do the hard break in now here's the real test for this uh off the line grip i'm not gonna romp it I'll put it back in work mode because I just want to see what it'll do crawling up this hill. Oh, you know that? I 
should have done this in the test drive beforehand. But just just from driving this vehicle for the last, you know, 660 miles, I kind of know this machine and this it, it makes a lot of noise with the old belt trying to come up this. This thing is just quiet and just grips super smooth. I mean, even three, four miles an hour and it's just, it's just gripping. Oh, broke the tire. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That wasn't even both tires. Give me a break. Or was it? No, no, that wasn't both tires. I don't know what's going on with the diff lock. Just decided not to join the party. No, never mind. The diff lock's working. The diff lock is working. Uh, yeah, there we are. There, there's the two spots. All right. I mean, okay, there's a little bit of you, this sound, but it's nowhere near the kind of herky-jerky engagement at that low RPM, low speed off the line, high, high torque requirement. It's just... This belt, man. And that's that's after 660 miles with that belt. With the old belt, when it was brand new, it was really herky-jerky and jumpy, especially off the line or at low speeds. The thing just did not like life. It would kind of surge and chug. And I don't know what to tell you, this belt's just good. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and get this cover put back on. Uh, putting the cover back on is not a big deal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera. Maybe I can get this big heavy helmet off my head. Alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and put this cover back on and do that off camera. And we'll conclude the video. All right, so this concludes the video of installing the HunterWorks upgraded belt for my Polaris Ranger XP1000. If you found this video helpful or informative, or if you enjoyed seeing this thing break loose, please consider leaving a like. If you've got any questions, leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this from my channel, please consider subscribing. Consider. Please consider subscribing. Alrighty, see you guys next time. Not so fast, take a fucking seat, Junior. As for the nine-year-old, that's his fucking fifth ball of the game, that selfish prick. Alright, so that's a very respectable 5600 RPM. And a very respectable 43 RPM, 43 miles an hour max speed. And it breaks the tires loose coming out of the turns too. Not very much. I mean, I'd probably do it more if I was in performance mode, but with the old belt, just to get even that much engagement, that much torque transfer, I would have to kick it into performance to get that out of the turns. Got 660 miles. Definitely putting more power to the ground. Oh, 
Like I can feel the rear end fighting for tra for traction down there. Like it's actually dripping and ripping. And the uh, the belt system is really quiet too. Like especially off the line. We'll just kind of slowly pull out. It's got it's got the noise now. Okay. But it's it's still quieter. The belt is quieter. in performance mode. And after I put that that new uh, brake light switch in this machine, I got some air out of the front brake lines in the process of bleeding the switch. And the brakes ever since have been a lot more powerful. Like, like I don't even have to stand on it to get the brakes to just lock up. Like they're, if you stab them, they actually kind of, they actually kind of do something. Whereas before it was like a car, but no power assist. There's 5750. 5700. 5800. Wow. I think that belt's breaking in. I think so. Yeah, I think that belt's breaking in. I gotta remember how fast this thing is. <laughs> Gee whiz. This thing is pretty quick now. It just seems like it's got more torque out of the corners. Where like, it had to just kind of think about it before. Now it's just kind of like it puts it down. Holy moly. Yeah, like I can feel it break loose on the rear. Not, not big, not swinging wide Tokyo drifting, but like it actually just kind of, just a little bit, just a little bit. I like that. That's pretty cool. And can burn off that inside tire on the turn. Woo -hoo. A little bit of a weight transfer there. The engine braking went to one wheel. brakes coming into that turn but the rest of it that was all engine braking all 
right, no brakes. That's all engine braking right there. Yeah, back up to 5,800 RPM. Oh, whoo. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done that. It's been a hell of a roller coaster. Woo! Gee whiz, my butt came out of the seat. seems to be as fast as I would want to do it comfortably for my spine. The suspension's a little soft. Alrighty. Well, this is fun. Let's get on to something else. Well, look out for the next video I'm going to make. Next video, I'm going to be greasing the rear wheel bearings on this Polaris and I think I'll uh, go ahead and re-grease the uh, front wheel bearings on this as well so all right stay tuned for next time